I'm you see, I'm all knotted up here. Dude, I you I mean rocking. every girl's crazy about a sharp dressed man. So um that's you. ZZ top, by the way. I mean Yeah, I know. We we've, we've been here and, and folks at home have to understand that that probably every fifth day on set for the last decade, we've asked Mel uh what one of the funniest things about or the great ironies of ZZ Top uh the band is, uh, of which uh, of course the only guy in the band without a beard is Frank Beard. Um, it's so. fantastic. And she obviously it took her about a year to, you know, get <laughs> hip to that. Now she, she really fashions herself as ZZ top, uh, you know, aficionado, but today we have to talk about infrastructure. And before we get into the stocks oh, and, and, right. and Do you I want to talk about this? the infrastructure. I want to talk about the infrastructure collapsing. of that's collapsing and, and, yeah. flushing. It's and collapsing. you know, it looks great. I mean, if you look at the, the exterior, you got Jake, you got the squirrel, you got the koala bear, you got all these. But internally, I mean, there was what was it built on? It was built on six designated hitters and, you know, a couple of questions. All right. Arms. Slow and down. Here we, are. Here, we are. here we are. Just we're we're on the right side of 500. Barely. Barely. This is the fun thing about a baseball season. It's long. It's arduous. These are the dog days of summer. And, and, and this is a moment where you're actually riding the crest of probably the biggest wave you've been on all season and enjoy it, pal, because I, I don't, I don't see how importing two more guys that are, that are all, you know, or nothing bats in a lineup that needs to play small ball with a pitching staff that's flawed. Your closer is down. Um, but, but yes, you're right. Uh, on a relative basis, Yankee fans over Met fans right now, uh, I think, are winning and they're girding their teeth. So speaking of girders and steel <laughs> and pipes, let's can we, you know, let's talk about pipes now. But but what's interesting about this infrastructure bill is, is that when we think about infrastructure that we grew up in, we thought about bridges and tunnels. This is a bill that's got you know seventy billion dollars allocated to broadband and and to infrastructure around technology. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I think, first of all, and, you know, we talk a lot about some of the telecom companies that have made major investments, those that have actually, uh, I think, leapfrogged uh, some of their competitors and also different technologies. Right. There are a lot of people that might not ever put a, a you know, a, a DSL, a, a, a coax into their house because, in fact, they can do this all wireless and 5G is kicking butt. Um, so it's just it's an interesting time because. Uh, we are a third world country. If you fly into Kennedy uh, from another part of the world and think you've landed in the most sophisticated country in the world, um, it's an embarrassment at times. So this is long overdue. No, no question about it. And, you know, the you mentioned the telecom stocks and, we, you know, we've talked about T-Mobile hundreds of times. Yep. We don't probably talk about like an American tower enough on our show. But, you know, it's interesting. The other side of that coin is all the names that you've been talking about for years now. Cleveland Cliffs, quietly, I think, is it an eight-year high? I mean, think about that for a second. Freeport McMoran. Is it still called gear. Cleveland Cliffs? I thought it was Cliff Resources. Or is, is or it, is Cliff, it you know, I, Cliff? That's the that's the old school know. in me. I you know I don't know to be honest with you. I know that. Let's put it this way: the symbol is CLF. Whether it's Cleveland Cliffs or Cliff Resources or Cliff uh, Cliff Johnson, who by the way was one Heathcliff. of those great Yankees. I think by the way, I think Heathcliff played in Cleveland at one point. Who was all all or nothing bat. I was going to say. I mean, the last time I think they called it Cleveland Cliffs, I think Austin Carr was suiting up for the Cavs or, or maybe uh, I'm trying to think who else was really, you know, those trademark uh, Nate. Larry Nance, wasn't he? Wasn't he part of that squad? I mean, he was. Yeah. I got to tell you, that guy could play. I don't know if he's in the Hall of Fame, but he should be. I mean, he was a, he was. He could play in today's NBA. That's high praise. Doesn't his kid play in today's NBA? Or is maybe. He, was, I, 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 you know, I, I don't know. It's, I, you know. 15, 20 years ago, I would know the answer to that question. A 57-year-old me does not know. By the way, if you put together, you know, 10 Donchick and, and Steph Curry contracts, you could have enough to, to, to pave every road in our country, man. These NBA 200, guys are 209 million, right, five years, 209. Did I see super that Super right? max contract. What does that mean? I heard he got the super max what does that mean? I don't. The only I mean, super max I know is like penitentiaries in Colorado, <laughs> which you don't want to be at. But good no, for him. I, I mean, and and the guy three years ago was on a rookie deal, and and he's now expected to to lead Dallas to their first. I mean, they haven't won anything in a decade, um, which is not a knock on our buddy Mark Cuban. I mean, those guys have, have, have you know they built a very strong fan base down there. Good for them. 
a uh, lot of money being paid to NBA players, a lot of money being spent on, on fixing up our bridges and tunnels and broadband. And a lot of money was spent in flushing this year that right now is not really not showing me a whole lot. Um, uh, I, listen, I didn't bring it, uh, you know, I just, I just well, report you, you, you decide, you know what I'm you, saying? You, you did bring it up. Um, do you think that there is still a run left in, in a Freeport Mac, a U.S. steel? And we talked about U.S. steel is an iconic company and it's worth talking about. I mean, the, it's such a sensitivity uh, on their balance sheet to the price of steel and to leverage. And, and yet they, they're on a probably a two year tailwind. That with I think you know whatever you want to say about the market and about this infrastructure bill, steel prices I I don't see how they can go lower for the foreseeable. So I I think no, there's something I there. agree with that. And you know the answer. I mean I know you know this better than I do. But in March I think of 2018, U.S. Steel was a forty-two dollar stock headed to sixty uh, in a straight line. And then obviously President Trump came out with the tariffs with the Chinese. Listen, I, I'm like this is not a political thing. I'm just that's what factually happened. And the stock spent the next year going from 45-ish down to $7, maybe even lower than that. I would submit, and I think you agree with this, this is the best environment, not only for the broader market, obviously, but for steel companies, the, the potential we've ever been in. And I think the stock is, what, 27 and a half, 28? Again, I'm, I'm not looking at it. But I think I would, listen, I'm not saying it's going back to 45, but this should easily be a $35 stock in this well, environment. And, and what I, I like to point out, uh, much in the way that I think the, the, the Mets front office um, has never been run better. Um, these companies have never been run better. And, and, and I think, you know, people misunderstand. There was a time if you were in a resource play and folks, commodity uh, cycles are, are long and, and, and they can be swift and they can be also at the same time, they can be scary for investors. Um, I, I, I think investors misperceive or misunderstand the, the opportunity that these companies may have ahead of them because they are run for equity shareholders. They're not necessarily run for growth at all costs. They've got management teams that are uh, long gone because they, they levered up the balance sheet and they left these companies on the precipice. And I think you've got management teams in place. So I think the energy trade, uh, the commodities trades, a lot of folks have been there. Um, have There's a lot of scorched earth underneath these folks, but look, uh, the economy is is kicking it, but more importantly, I think the foundation that a lot of these companies are going to be going into this ascent is is, is pretty good. And and it's it's as much as you guys are having a better run in the Bronx right now. I don't, you know, that foundation. Um, in fact, Booney, you know, I, he saved his job for 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 this season, um, but you're not winning anything with with, with that starting lineup, right? Listen, um, I, I I'm I'm not gonna. I agree with you. How's that? But I'll say this real quick before we get out of here. Somebody should buy U.S. Steel for $10 billion. It's a $7.5 billion market cap company. Somebody should step up, buy it for $10 billion. I think it would be genius in this environment. Stock's too cheap. The rent's too expensive. The stock's too cheap. Well, and it's interesting because, again, I go back to this new infrastructure bill, um, the components that were the former building blocks versus the building blocks of tomorrow. Um, you know, what's more valuable here, um, in terra firma or, or technology? That's a big debate. We're not going to solve it here. Um, but I love how you're looking today, man. Sharp dress. And, and I hope and I hope Javi Baez makes it back for September baseball. <sighs> you win. <laughs> you, you win on your trade deadline. I, I take, I'll, you know, what? I take Rizzo over Baez, but that's for another day. Have a good day. Later.